All right, I'm back. Someone told me that my voice was muted. So please give me a thumbs up if, uh, if you can hear me and if everything in the audio realm is sounding good, then I'll continue. But please give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. So I was talking about uh, learning from our mistakes and how in, cool, thank you, Tyler. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Julian. Um, the aviation, oh, Nas, you're, you're too nice. Um, what I was discussing was that in aviation, we have the black box thinking. And the black box thinking is that whenever a plane crashes or has a, has a problem, there's this black box that is broadcasted to, to everybody. It's broadcasted all over aviation so that every pilot and mechanic and person working the airport can learn from these mistakes. And you know, I just love this because you see aviation and there's so little problems, right? Very few planes crash. However, in medicine, and in dentistry, what we do is hide our complications. We, we hide whenever we have uh, a problem, whether that is clinical or whether that is with a staff member or whether that is with a patient, uh, you know, in an interpersonal relationship way. And what I would love to see is to see our profession, the profession of dentistry and, and medicine as a whole, really be able to be honest with, with our colleagues, with our patients, and understand that, you know, not everything is perfect. And I had to learn this, I had to learn this the hard way, unfortunately, because, you know, I've had problems with staff members, I've had problems with patients, interpersonal relationship kind of problems, communication issues. And, you know, I was very embarrassed of them because I saw them as a weakness for myself. I said, you know, I knew all the things that I did wrong. Now, I wouldn't do those again. However, that was why I started a course like LightSide is because I wanted my colleagues to not have to learn from their mistakes. I wanted them to learn from my own mistakes. Because this for me is what a true mentor is like. You know, my mentors, and I've had many of them throughout my life, my mentors, I've been able to learn from their mistakes. So you take, um, you know, a mentor like Pascal Magne, and all of the bonding knowledge and aesthetic knowledge that he was able to pass on to me and Matt Najad, you know, we took 20 years of experience and he boiled it down to everything we needed to know. The same thing when you look at like Sasha Jovanovic. I mean, I took 30 years of bone grafting, implantology, perio experience and was able to learn by watching him and working with him. And that's what I'm trying to do with the aspect of mental health. You know, I have 11 years of, of pra practice experience, but I think I've been, um, you know, I've been at the top of the mountain. I've been at what we call in light side, uh, Mount Stupid. I've been all the way down, poof, crashing at the Valley of Despair. And I know how that feels. And I know that there's many doctors out there that are suffering in silence because there's a this taboo subject of um, depression and anxiety and mental health in our profession and now I am on my on my slope of enlightenment that I think is never-ending and I hope that I can can help some of you whether you at what point you're at in your mindfulness journey I think having somebody that that has been through it is um, is helpful you know I had someone message me this morning that said 
They said, thanks for talking about this topic. I have been suffering in silence for years because I'm too embarrassed to bring up the fact that I'm depressed and I have anxiety and I'm nervous at my practice and with my staff members. And they just said, thanks. It's nice to know that someone else is um, experiencing this. So someone said the mistakes aren't important for our growth in our the mistakes it's important for our growth in our profession but we have to learn with it and take it to make it better and better that's right you know we you don't get better unless you make mistakes right you just keep doing the same thing so once we make the mistake we have to identify what happened and we need to identify whether it was our mistake or not because I've mentioned this before, you know, in light side, we talk about the triangle of blame. And the triangle of blame is understanding that us dentists can't control every factor with patient care. You know, we can do our treatment, we can do our surgeries, we can do our follow up, we can understand our materials, we can train our staff members, but we can't control what the patient does when the patient goes home, we can't control if they're taking the medications that we recommend, if they're following the diet that we recommend, if they're coming back to see us when we say to come back and see us. And then the other aspect that we can't control is of course these human factors that no one can control. So the genetics, the musculature of the patient, the you know angle of the mandible, um, the physics that's happening in the mouth. These are things that we can't control. So we can't blame ourselves for those. We can take blame for certain things, of course. Like if you do something wrong, if you, you know, place the suturing wrong, or if you, you know, drill too deep or something, of course we need to take blame for that. However, if a patient comes in and something fractured and you did everything right, that means that once the patient left, they didn't follow your directions or they weren't doing the diet that you recommended. And so I had to separate myself from the blame that I could take and the blame that wasn't associated with me. And that is so important. So we have a comment that says, looking back at 90% of my cases, there's always something I would do different from today's perspective. Most of the dentists have trouble of admitting an error due to our professional ego. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, they always say your last case should be your best case, right? Because you've learned from every other case that you've done. And you know, the comment says, most of the dentists have trouble admitting an error due to our professional ego. And I think there's even more to that. I think there's the fact of liability, right? We don't want to be sued. So we, it's difficult to admit your, admit your faults. Now, I think, and you know, I talk about this in, in the light side course, I think we need to be more upfront about complications and about human factors with our patients. Because when it comes on the back end, you know, you don't talk about it, something happens, then you talk about it, right, with the patient, it looks like an excuse. However, before the patient has the treatment, that's when you talk about the complications. That's when you tell them this could break, you know, you could need a root canal, this could be sensitive, the aesthetics may not be right, your bite may be off, et cetera, et cetera. Because then it's information. It's a warning. It's not an excuse. And I tell you, I have had to learn that the hard way. And now when I talk to patients before we do treatment, I'm telling them everything that can happen, everything, worst case scenario. Because I was always afraid to do that early on because I thought patients would do less treatment with me. But what I found was that the more honest and upfront and human that I could be perceived as, the more the patients trusted me and the, 
the more treatment they wanted to do actually. I thought by talking to them about complications, it would scare them away so much. So there was a question that says, uh, which mistake was one of the most painful that you've learned from and what did you improve? So I think it was mistake with complications, um, discussing them early with the patient. I think also what I uh, did wrong was letting patients dictate treatment. Letting patients push me to do things that I wasn't comfortable with. As far as timing, you know, I talk about slow dentistry. It's something that uh, my Portuguese cousin, Miguel Stanley, uh, talks a lot about. Slow dentistry, sitting down, relaxing, letting the patient know this is gonna take a long time. You can go to another practice and have this done in two hours, but it's gonna take me four hours, or it's gonna take me two weeks to do this. And this is how I wanna do it. This is how I think it's done correctly. Do you wanna do that or not? I think early in my career, I had patients that came in and would push me and say, you know, I need this done in a month. And I would say, well, usually this takes two months because we have to wait for the lab and I wanna see how you heal and this and that. And they're like, I need this done in a month. And guess what? I have all this money and I don't care how much it costs. And I think the problem was is early in my career, because of all the debt that so much of us are in, I needed that money to you know, pay my student loans, to pay my practice loans. And I would do these procedures and get pushed into the corner and then complications would happen and I would be in, in a bad position with a patient. You know, whether I had to give money back or, you know, they were threatening legal action or they were speaking bad about me in the community, I really put myself in, in a bad position there. And, you know, oftentimes it's not the clinical aspect. Of course, I've made clinical um, mistakes. I'm human, like, like all of us are. And I think that's what's important to talk to our talk to our patients about is that we're human so we can make mistakes they're human so they can make mistakes so you have two imperfect beings trying to do something perfect it's never going to happen and all of us have had this have had these problems where you have 10 patients and you do the exact same thing on all 10 patients and guess what eight of them are perfect but two of them are not perfect because you're human, they're human, you have all these other human factors, genetics, and how they bite and musculature and the bacterial flora in their mouth. That is different. And every patient is different. And I think that's something that we don't look at is the host response. And in medicine, the host response oftentimes isn't blamed towards the doctor. However, in dentistry, it is, right? Every time something goes wrong, the patient comes in, you know, let's say you do a crown. The patient comes in and something happened with the crown. They say, your crown broke or your crown came off or your crown causes me pain. It's like, my crown, that's your crown, <laughs> right? This is yours, it's in your mouth, it's your body. You can do whatever you can and something can go wrong. So I like to talk to patients and say, you know, at the end of, let's say a big surgery, you know, I do, I do implants and stuff. So at the end of a surgery, Mrs. Jones, I did the best I could today. You know, I probably did 90% of what I think is possible with, with my hands. You know, let's say it's, it's implants. I did guided surgery. I did partial extraction therapy. I did immediate provisional. I did a tissue graft, whatever. Now, from now on, it's up to you how you heal, how you take care of this, how often I see you. I would like to see you at, you know, two weeks, a month, six months, whatever it is. Now, if they don't follow those directions, you've done your part, right? 
At this point, it's kind of on them. And I think that too much, too many times, we take all this blame. And we need to be more like the aviation profession and spread our mistakes, right? Spread our mistakes. I'm trying to post more and more uh, complications that I've had because that's when people learn. People don't learn from me a lot when I post a perfect case. They learn if I can post, you know, I did this case, I thought it was going to be perfect because I did the same thing I do every time. That eight out of 10 times it may be perfect, but then this is the one or two times that I had that complication. Let's talk about it. Let's see what happened. And that's when people learn. So in summary, we need to learn from our mistakes. We need to understand the triangle of blame. We need to get rid of this taboo subject of anxiety and depression in our profession because people are suffering in silence. And I hate to see hardworking, good professional dentists that are suffering in silence. So be the light in, in your community talk to your colleagues, make sure they're okay. When you say, hey, how you doing? Really mean, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? And for, for those of you that are interested in learning more or being a part of our LightSide community, go to the link in my bio, sign up for our next course that is starting in May. It was gonna be in June, but we moved it up because we had a lot of people saying, I don't wanna wait until June, I need it now. <laughs> So uh, we moved it up. I'll be interviewing a bunch of our lightsiders before we, before we launch the next one. And uh, I just am so thankful for all of you guys for watching, for supporting me in this venture to spread the word about mindfulness and stress reduction in our, in our profession. You know, I can't tell you how much support I've gotten from colleagues around the world. This isn't an American problem. This is a, a, a human dental problem. So I really want to thank everybody. All those messages that you guys send me makes me know that I'm doing the right thing by putting energy into this and trying to help our profession. So thanks, guys. Happy Sunday. Go spend it with your family. Don't think about dentistry.